we're in for another beautiful weekend up here nice and cool out absolutely gorgeous and every time we start we kind of go through the mill make sure everything's nice and tight and all that good stuff it only takes a couple minutes always take the tension off of these blades we've talked about it before otherwise the rubber tires on your uh, band wheels will actually get flat spots. And then nothing's gonna run right. Should have brushed this off last time. I always back the blade off the guides a little bit because when they, if you leave them in the guides like I do, and I probably shouldn't, it's me being lazy, not wanting to have to redo the blade every time I come up. You're gonna wanna back them out of the blades a little bit or out of the guides because sometimes you get a little rust there. And when you get that rust, she likes to, uh, I had one blade snap on me one time because of that. So something you always check. That little bit of rust on the blade, you get about a couple feet into your first cut, that stuff's gone. Polishes right off. Alright, the last few videos up here that we've been doing, I've had more comments on this little miracle than just about anything. A lot of you folks have a lot of questions. How well does this work and all that good stuff. So let's go through this debarking tool. So this is an actual log wizard. And all it is, let me get you close up here. So it's the same kind of drum setup that you would see on a, uh, oh, a handheld electric planer. It's pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, you got a couple blades in here. And even for the amount of dirt and brush that we've been hogging off of these logs, or dirt and bark, excuse me, those blades are not bad at all. I mean, they're going to need a sharpening soon, but the way I figure as long as they're still cutting smooth, I don't need them to be... Uh, super super quality cuts i'm just peeling peeling bark but it's like anything else you start running them dull and you are going to put more wear and tear on your machines but i will say if you do get one of these for your sawmill or for log building or anything like that they work excellent but i'm going to tell you if you're using it for anything with with finish type work in mind for log building or anything take some practice pieces because you can hog a lot off in a hurry with these get used to the feel of it and every chainsaw you put this on it's going to run it a little bit different now personally i would not run this thing on anything less than a 50 cc saw i'm not sure what the manufacturer recommends but honestly i've had it on a couple different ones and it likes bigger than 50 cc 
So I'm running it on an old, an old steel Super 028 or 028 Super. And I want to say, I could be wrong, I think this is about a 52cc saw. I don't like these for cutting wood, and I know I'm going to get the hate mail on this, but these have always been slow. Just for me, slow-ass saws. I've had a couple over the years for firewood. Don't care for it for that, but I actually really like it for the setup with a log wizard. And let's see, I don't even know if they're still in business. GI is a close-up of the name tag on there, so in case anybody's curious or looking for their own. This is the expensive version. Um, there's a lot of manufacturers making these now. You can get them for about 100 bucks, and they look like they work really well. This is the one that I have experience with. This thing has been absolutely phenomenal. So I've had a couple of you also ask me why I'm going down instead of that way with the bark. For me on the sawmill, you guys see how wide I made the mill trailer itself, and there's a couple reasons for that. We'll get into it later on, probably this winter. But I find for me holding the saw, it's a lot easier for me to hold it straight on than it is to try to hold it sideways and, and run across. Um, it's messy. You guys can see all that on the ground. That's just from debarking, and especially this uh, fur. This fur has a lot of sap. This balsam fur, it's a very, very sappy wood. It gets into everything. It builds up on everything. So I also use a saw that I don't care if it gets dirty because that's what it looks like as you're going. So when we get this home, when we're all done up here, we'll probably take a we'll probably take stuff and clean that right up. But keep in mind if you're using it, if you're a chainsaw guy like I am, don't put your favorite saw on that because it is messy. So I find that it works really well. When you get into bark like this that's covered in dirt where you've dragged them. Now this is a very sandy black loam. So it comes off really easy. But the dirt gets into the bark. And when the dirt gets into the bark, it takes your teeth of your sawmill blade. And it just turns it into hamburger. I mean it just eats it right up. It's no good. So unless you want to be replacing blades every couple of logs, you want to think about debarking. I've had that question over the years quite a bit. Now, if you're like Nathan over at uh, Out of the Woods, Nathan has an actual tool on his wood miser sawmill that follows in front of the blade kerf and actually clears a path. So he's he's got a, a good setup there. Unfortunately, this is a manual mill and we really don't have any way to do something like that on this. But uh, honestly, guys, debarking your logs, it's going to save you so much money and time in saw blades. These blades are easy enough to sharpen. We're going to be building a sharpener over the winter for them because I'm going to have a, probably about 30 blades after this up here to go through and, and take care of. But it's definitely... Debarking these logs is worth its weight in gold. And with a tool like that, i got to be honest with you, it's so fast to use, it does such a nice job that it's crazy not to do it. You figure a new band blade, probably $22 to $28, somewhere in there, depending on what you have. You figure that right there, if you get one of the ones off of Amazon for about 100 bucks. You think of how much money you're going to save in the long run debarking with something like that versus replacing blades all the time because a lot of guys do not have a way to sharpen these blades. You know, you first get your mill, a lot of them, once the blade goes dull, a lot of people throw the blade into a pile and they go get a bunch of new ones, which, uh, I mean, you could sharpen these multiple times.
well, we've been showing a lot of sawmill and a lot of tree cutting. I'm going to walk you guys through what our unprofessional off-grid, half-assed little logging setup entails. So I've gotten a lot of comments from a lot of so-called professionals. And some, once you get going back and forth, you can tell they're professionals. So let me tell you what this setup is and what it isn't. What this setup is, is an excellent way for somebody who say you only have a four-wheeler, you can do a little bit of welding, you can build your own things, you can get yourself lumber going just with this right here. This is no substitute for a tractor, it's no substitute for a skidder. This is nothing that you're going to log hundreds of acres with, but if you're trying to build yourself a couple of buildings or you're a woodworker, it's an excellent setup. It does everything you need to keep you going and to keep you in logs. So you've seen in some previous video, the Idiot Logger series. Now that those titles, the reason for those titles is I, I had a viewer call me another idiot YouTube logger. So I thought, what a great title. I said that a few videos back. Some people take that stuff pretty seriously. But uh, so anyway, you guys watch me build it if you've been here for a while, but we have the log arts. This has worked phenomenal and it's actually, uh, it saved my bacon a couple times up here in the woods because we are many miles off of any main roads or anywhere that's public. So we have a 12 volt winch on there. I believe that's a, I want to say it's a one ton or a one and a half ton winch. Works great. Got a snatch block hooked to that. I'm going to revamp this a little bit because I don't care for that, but for right now it's working fine. Everything we're doing up here runs on gasoline and 12 volt. Obviously we have the four-wheeler. It's a 660 Grizzly, old one. Works great for what we're doing, plenty of power. Of course the sawmill, you guys have been seeing this in a lot of other videos. You guys watch me build the trailer for it. It's been working great. Now I had a, a comment, a question. I think it was from Bruce. He wanted to know how much flex and how's this affecting the wood with this trailer here. Uh, if I take the time, and I do every time, and level this thing up, if I level this back corner up, or this side to side, and I level the front up side to side, there's absolutely no twist. I don't care what it's doing lengthwise, I actually kind of like to have it downhill a little bit, kind of assist with the sawmill travel. So, <clears throat> I've had no twist in my lumber, I haven't had anything out of whack, out of square. I've run a couple string lines on some of the lumber just to see how it is, and I've had no issues whatsoever. Absolutely nothing. Uh, the other thing that makes all this work and makes it all possible is this jib crane. Again, something else you guys watch me build. That's just a 3,000 pound ATV winch, runs off a 12 volt, and that's been working perfectly. So I got a little pulley on there. You guys have watched me pull a bunch of logs up the side of that now. That's working out great. So being as how we are many miles from anywhere here, I mean, look around you. This is as open as it gets up here. Everything else is pretty much straight up big woods. It looks like I have some smudges on the camera. I apologize. So this is just a food plot. One of the food plots I've been talking about that we're trying not to destroy, even though they are redisking everything here in the next couple of weeks and replanting them. We're still trying to be polite guests. So being as how we're many miles off of any roads and many miles from any power source, we have a nice little solar setup here that's been keeping our little solar gel pack battery charged. Let's see if we can get you where you can see it. So let's get you a brand name here. Thunderbolt Magnum Solar. Now this was a gift from a friend of mine, this whole setup here. And it has been a godsend. This battery right here, I can run it all weekend without charging it. They're running all the winches and we've been running them heavy. But what I'd like to do from time to time Let's get everything set up. So we have a Wanderer solar charge controller. This has actually been working quite well. 
Nice thing about this is it also has ports to charge camera batteries and cell phones. That's been working phenomenal. I've had no issues with that. Right now it is cloudy out. We got 13 volts at the battery. We have a 15 volt load. Come on, and we're putting out 13.3 volts even on the clouds. So it will recharge just kind of slowly. This whole setup, it's very simple. Um, again, everything I'm running is on 12 volt motors on these winches, and the winches right now are the heart and soul of this operation. This is the first time I could say in all the years I've been running my sawmill that I'm not killing myself. To be quite honest with you, I'm actually having easier time with this than I did even using the tractor to load the sawmill. I mean, nobody's nobody's hurting themselves. Nobody's, you know, overexerting. And that's kind of nice. It's not that we're lazy. I just don't like feeling it for a week after doing it anymore. But that's what we have. That is our complete, total, I don't know what you want to call it. You want to call it an off-grid mill setup, any of that good stuff. You know, this is what we've been working on last couple days worth. I'm actually making more lumber today than we did all last weekend. I should say faster, I'm making it faster than we did last weekend, but we we're doing a lot of other stuff too, clearing things out. So we're kind of sorting our piles as we go, kind of half-assed. Wyatt has his pile going. This one's mine. This one's also mine. So a couple of these boards right here, you can see the, uh, right there you can see the carpenter ants have been at them. Right down in there, you can see the marks they left there. Those boards right there, that's only a couple feet worth. But being as the carpenter ants are in them, this stuff's still green. Once I sticker stack this before we can take it up the road, I don't want this stacked anywhere near what I'm working on right now. I want all this other stuff here. We want to get this in a separate pile away from this. Now, when I get this home, this stuff here is not going to go in the barn. Remember, that barn's built out of green, white pine. Carpenter ants love white pine, but they really love balsam fir for some reason. And you could tell if you have a tree full of carpenter ants, when you go to cut it down, you're actually going to see where the woodpeckers have been at it, close to the ground. Amazing birds, those uh, woodpeckers. But anyway, that's the tour of our off-road, off-grid sawmill setup. It's never totally off-grid. We're still using gas, we're still using electricity, we're just not connected to anything doing it right now. And I'll take that every day of the week. Thank <laughs> you.